Hey guys, Legend of Grimlock here, and we're finishing up the scaling section with Zygarde. Don't worry, Necromaza, Jetta, and Jetta Doma are still getting theirs, but let's start off with Zygarde, right? So, first off, with the scaling, we have to scale Mega Evolution, minus the legendaries you see on here. Minus, well, Rayquaza especially. <laughs> so, they would actually scale to Volcanion, and this is important here because Volcanion, I would say, is around the planet maybe even universal levels of margins this is due to the fact that things like sorry not things dear god uh pokemon like a big hair across is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and even stagger dark cry with mega evolution possibly giving it and let's use dragon ball logic a 10 times multiplier making them absolutely strong enough to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe and even nail legendaries and we also know Darkrai does have universal outer to outer versal levels of attack potency. However, he's able to one shot regular Pokemon, you know, like nothing. And Mega Evolution is known to give these Pokemon a hard time. All right. Sorry, legendary Pokemon a hard time. There's also the final battle for Kalos, where a bunch of the elite trainers and their Mega Evolutions fought a Megalith Zygarde. And we know that Mega Evolution allows them to pretty much fight on par with Legendaries because, again, Volcano was fighting a whole bunch of them. And, I mean, he fought, like, multiple. And, I mean, multiple um, Legendary Pokemon. And what's important is Zygarde, in his 10% form, his dog form, was able to straight-up wreck Mega Evolutions like Mega Glalie, Mega Pidgeot, Mega Agron, and Mega Tyranitar in this 10% form. You then have his 50% form, which absolutely destroyed things like uh, Mega Charizard X, Mega um, Kanga Chang, or whatever. But, you know, he, he absolutely one-shot these evolutions. And again, there's the Mega Live Zygarde scaling, to which its 50% form should be on par, if not slightly inferior to it. But his 100% his form, or his final form, or his perfect form was able to straight up bulldoze and absolutely destroy it. Now again, Mega Evolution scaling, all right? With Mega Zygarde having planetary to universal stuff here, we do know that um, Alan and Steven's Mega Evolutions were able to fight against Groudon like it was like you know sorry primal Groudon and primal Kyogre, like it was their um pretty much their business just cutting through their attacks absolutely nailing them but however they do manage to you know still i guess you could say get one shot by them however the fact that they're able to damage and even hang in the fight even taking multiple attacks from them even some attacks that should one shot should cement that these guys are again extremely powerful and not only does Mega Zygarde one shot a Mega Charizard X in the same fashion, but he absolutely dominates and humiliates it. So this would mean that Zygarde at his 50% state should be stronger than Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. Now, next off, we have the Mega, sorry, the Ultra B scaling. And this is actually pretty important here because Zygarde in his 50% form intimidated these guys to leave the Kalos region and they actually tried their luck with Alola and decided that they should stay there until Necromaza reared its ugly head and started fighting now one of the few mega sorry ultra beasts we actually have to scale here is Nihilego because the ultra beasts do kind of scale to each other hand in hand and Nihilego was able to fuse with Lucimin, hottie, um, baddie, uh, milf, I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, y'all didn't hear that, uh, was able to feel, fuse, fuse, fuse with, um, Lucimin to basically make her as powerful as, dear God, he, it, it made a human so powerful that they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Duskwing Necromaza. Now, Duskwing Necromaza is the fusion, or at least the energy-absorbed version of a Necromaza amped uh, sorry, a Lunala that basically, okay, it's Necromaza amped with Lunala's energy. That's what I'm trying to say here. And Duskwing and, you know, D Duskwing and Duskmane both scale to each other hand in hand, and they both scale above a regular Necromaza, who I'll get into in a little bit. Now, we also have to, again, scale other Ultra Beasts like Buzzwool. 
And what's important here is Buzzwell was able to go toe to toe and absolutely um, was actually flooring Tapu Koko. And this is because Buzzwell is just, just like one of the best physical powerhouses. I swear, I thought Ash legit caught this on purpose. And I, in all honesty, I think he should have. I mean, imagine Buzzwell versus Tapu Koko round two. And this thing will straight up be in the dog crap out of. <laughs> Out of um, you know, out of Tapu Koko, dude was beating the mess out of it. Like, jeez, man, chill. And you know, with Tapu Koko being able to fight against you know other Necromazas or at least other versions of them, it again shows that these guys have universal plus attack potency. There's also Final Form or Perfect Necromaza or Final Form Necromaza. I'll just keep it like that. Who scales above? Again, this the Duskwing and Dusk main versions of itself, and it absolutely thrashes Sogaleo, who is known to go around eating entire stars. Plus, there's the fact that they brought light to the entire universe, so they brought light to an infinite universe. This will put their speed at many, not only many times faster than light, but you could actually count their speed as omnipresent as well because they've been able to bring light to. All of the dimensions, they all these dimensions have some form of light, and they are the light trio. They literally embody both light and darkness itself. And you could actually say Necromaza scale easily scales above the embodiments of both light and darkness. Like, what, what is there anything more I need to say? There's also the fact that Z Mega, sorry, Zygard, um, in his fifty percent form is equal to life and death. Exernius and Evelter are literally the embodiments, the singularities of life and death. These guys are, what is the word I'm looking for? They're literally the abstracts of their respective elements. And if one gets out of line or if one's not available, then they'll bring death and they'll bring too much life to the entire universe that they're in. So in all honesty, um, Zygarde at 50% balances these two out. He's actually able to use his energy manipulation to balance out life and death so that Eveltail doesn't kill everything and Exernius doesn't over, you know, I guess you could say like over revive everything, if you will, right? There's too much life and it's like, I guess you could say like it's a Thanos issue, overpopulation, but here they're perfectly balanced. So you have the Veil Tail and Exernia scaling. You have the Lunala and Sogaleo scaling. But I still think we need to address a couple of things here. For starters, I would still say that Zygarde in his free percent form is above Primal Grata and Primal Kyogre. So this means that perfect Zygarde should be around the same levels as Mega Rayquaza, and I would actually say Ultra Necromaza or Final Form Necromaza is at that level as well. Now I won't get in too much for it, but here's like a little hints in it, hint, little hints in it. And you guys already know how I scale Necromaza for like versus battles when I'm using characters like Rayquaza, Giratina, Dialga, Palka. You guys get it. Necromaza absorbed all the light in her dimension. This is basically. Ultra space is basically like a space beyond our own. This is all a space, all right? The Pokemon version of space itself. So Necromaza is actually able to absorb every star in space. Everything. And that's power to it. It eats the stars. It eats this energy to power itself up, all right? And... It, it, it's light actually shines the brightest out of the three trio and it, even then it's even rumored that ultra necromaza or final form necromaza actually brought light by itself to the universe before sogaleo and lunala balanced it out with both light and darkness all right so with that being said these two have these two are honestly um very powerful so this me and here's the thing right zygarde in his 100 percent form was not only matching but overpowering sorry overpowering powering um ultra necromaza now do i think 
perfect Zygarde is on par with Rayquaza? Yes. I do think he scales to Mega Rayquaza. But he might actually be physically stronger than Rayquaza. And this is due to the lore that's kind of established for these three here. They kind of repre they represent the North Mythology trio. Sorry, Norse Mythology trio. And you have Zygarde being able to hold all the realms. Basically, every universe. He's able to hold infinite universes in his, with its tail. This includes space, time, and reality. So overall, where would I say Zygarde ranks? I definitely think he's he's in the top 10. He's definitely in the top 10 strongest legendary Pokemon. All right. And I would say he's in the same bracket, if not slightly below Mega Rayquaza, but might even be but might just be physically stronger than him. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and share it to friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I'll see you guys later for the next video. Peace.